Well, we've almost come to the end of our tour of the world's worst hooligans. So who's the last on the list? Before we find out, here's a quick recap. At number 10, it's the Italians. They are ultra-political, ultra-violent, and have a penchant for stabbing people in the arse. At 9, the Germans. Organised, disciplined, but like the English hooligans, suppressed by the police. At 8, Colombia. A country where drugs rule and players are murdered. At 7, the former Yugoslavia. A place where ethnic differences are played out on the terraces and hooligans were turned into paramilitaries. At 6, the Dutch. A country where hooligans blow each other up with homemade bombs. At number 5, the Russians. Coping with the collapse of communism by smashing up their own capital city. At 4, the Turks. Passionate about football, but they will never shrug off the murders of visiting Leeds fans. At 3, Argentina. Dirty on and off the pitch. The most dangerous place in the world to watch a game. At 2, the Poles. Dangerously neo-Nazi, they will take the fight to anyone. They could be a big threat to peace at the World Cup this year. Finally, the last in my hooligan hall of shame. After all the violence, murder and mayhem of our tour of trouble around the world, I bet you're wondering what could top it. Well, what about a full-blown war? In 1969, Central American neighbours El Salvador and Honduras faced off in a series of qualifiers for the World Cup in Mexico the following year. The fact that it was in Mexico was really vital. This was a World Cup where they could be close to home, was you know, somewhere where they, they stood a chance of you know, regional success being, um, if you like, projected on an international uh, a world stage. Both military dictatorships it was a grudge match between old rivals and recent events were coming to a head. Honduras had become increasingly angered by illegal immigration from its overpopulated neighbour. It was a time bomb waiting to explode. The real trigger to this war was the Honduran decision to expel Salvadoran settlers from Honduras. And that happened just as the first game was being played in Tegucigalpa. From the football point of view it was disastrous timing. Honduras won the first match in Tegucigalpa, 1-0. The following week in San Salvador, El Salvador won 3-0. There had been minor scuffles at the match, but after the game, El Salvador fans attacked the Honduras team's hotel with rocks. The rumours back in Honduras were that Hondurans had been attacked and that a Honduran woman had been raped and so on and so forth. So the atmosphere was absolutely um, really, really tight. And uh, there's no doubt that um, the, the games contributed hugely to that. At the third game, a playoff in Mexico City, El Salvador knocked out their rivals 3-2 in extra time. Although El Salvador had won, agro caused by the football matches had tipped the tension over the edge. Two weeks after the final game on July 14th, El Salvador invaded Honduras. This is the first war the army of El Salvador ever had. Uniforms, weapons, webbing were all American, but they'd never had a chance to really use them until now. The Salvadorian military invaded. They met very little resistance. However, they did kill a few people, more than a few people, I have to say about a thousand people. The Hondurans fought back and destroyed the entire Salvadorian air force. El Salvador retreated after just six days. Never before or since has there been so much violence caused by football. History will always remember it as the soccer war and the worst case of state-sanctioned hooliganism the world has ever seen. If the games hadn't taken place, I wonder whether the invasion would have taken place. A thousand people? I don't know where you can find that number of casualties in a football match. A thousand fucking dead, but there must be some awful fucking mental people there. Can you believe it? a war over a football match and we thought English hooligans were bad. Well that's it from me and my International Hooligan Hall of Shame but before we go I'll leave the last word to the friendliest fans, the Danish Rolligans. Arsenal Wenger is a great trainer, great strategist and a very fine Frenchman.